acquisition and other problems associated with agricultural financing reduce the funds available and requires disappropriate amount of administrative cost and time to recover the loan. Thus, profitability is reduced. This brings us to our topic today on agri-economy as we shall be taking a look at the impact of loan acquisition on agriculture. We know that most businesses uh, like agriculture, uh, you know, needs enough financing. This is why uh, we're talking loan today on the program. My name is Kajida Uluwato Amin. Sit back, relax, the program continues shortly. Stay tuned. In Nigeria, agriculture is not practiced as a purposeful and enterprising manner. It is practiced more as a survival strategy rather than as a business venture. This is attributed to low income status of farmers, which makes them seldom able to accumulate capital goods required for purposeful and sustainable agriculture, causing their level of capacity utilization to be very low. Availability of loans to farmers has been observed as one sure way of increasing agricultural output through the improvement of efficiency and the expansion of production loan to farmers, according to Olatumbode in an article in 1990 said it would assist in the following ways. Procure new improved technology in agriculture, purchase high-yielding and disease-resistant crops, put more land into cultivation and organize the farm better and more purposeful. Insufficient extension of production loan to farmers, according to Mayor in 1986, is the more critical factor responsible for the declining agricultural production. There is a big gap between the demand for and supply of loan to farmers for agricultural activities. Problems faced by farmers in raising money for agricultural production is colossal because, according to Chidebelu in 1983, Commercial and merchant banks are reluctant to give money for agricultural production. The reluctance is due to largely the fact that agriculture is biological in nature, hence prone to risk. The establishment of several loan schemes in Nigeria is intended to solve the problem of lack of loan to the agricultural sector. Efforts to encourage farmers in Nigeria with loan and other agricultural incentives have only given individuals with political loyalty to the reigning government access to exploiting the ordinary farmers. Such incentives usually get to false farmers who use it for other non-agricultural purposes. Repayment of loan by farmers is one major problem why loans are not being given by commercial banks. Let's now go to the main story for the day. and I'm very sure that you enjoyed that uh, listening to that uh, short clip as regards loan acquisition in Nigeria. We know that, like I said earlier, that money is the root of everything, not only evil. And this, uh, you know, uh, is one thing that drives every sector. This, without money, we know that um, the agricultural sector, of course, cannot thrive. Uh, today, we shall be discussing loan acquisition with our guest, uh, Mr. Gabriel Dacolo. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you for having me. Yes, we've seen, uh, you know, farmers complain as regards um, that there's no much funding hands, there are small scale uh, farmers. When you talk about uh, value addition, they'll tell you, I have not finished cultivating this small plot. You're telling me value addition, how do I go about it? We know that most ways which some farm, uh, big farms get money is through loan. Yeah. How easy is this process? Um, uh, to say the truth, the process of getting loans in uh, for agricultural purposes in Nigeria is tedious and uh, it can also be as a reason of the uncertainty and the high risk that is associated with uh, agriculture. Uh, that is a global phenomenon anyway, but uh, in Nigeria, uh, get assessing loans for agriculture takes a, a lot more critical assessment than uh, other lines of business. Uh, be that as it may, uh, because of the need and the importance of agriculture to our existence as a nation in this world, we need uh, continuous uh, agricultural expansion, we need continuous agricultural improvement, and this uh, makes it very important for loans, as we can call it uh, another way, capital 
to enhance agricultural activities. Uh, primary uh, uh, loan or lenders in Nigeria, for example, are commercial banks, uh, microfinance banks, and other financial institutions. But uh, that is not the only source of loans that is available for uh, banks because there are multilateral agencies that are willing to partner with the government to be able to give loan in particular areas of agriculture or in particular uh, uh, research uh, areas to be able to boost agriculture uh, in Nigeria. We also have uh, organizations that are even willing to give grants to be able to improve our agricultural network. These grants can be given through government and uh, sometimes these loans are also given through government by these multilateral agencies to be disbursed to these farmers and with a long-term repayment pattern. So loan or uh, capital, uh, sourcing capital in agriculture is very, very important uh, to expand uh, agricultural activities and to deepen our agricultural practice, both uh, for farming and other integrated agricultural activities. Okay, so now looking at um, um, you know loan in its whole, what's the impact on agriculture if cotton? Yes, um, for example, if a cocoa farmer, for example, has enough loan or a, a can have access to adequate loan to be able to maintain his cocoa farm, two things happen. He will not only be able to maintain the cocoa farm, he will be able to expand. He will not only be able to expand, he will be able to have the opportunity of what we call value addition. What we have discovered in Nigeria is that one of the major challenges or impediments that we have in agriculture is value addition. And we discovered that uh, most of our farmers are fixated in exporting their products, which is not bad, but uh, it will have been good and it will do justice to our economy and improve our GDP if value is already added before these products are exported in their raw form. Uh, I want to use cocoa as an example again. You discover that uh, an average cocoa farmer might not be able to buy the value added uh, cocoa that must have turned to chocolate on the long run because of the cost that it will come with. So value addition takes about 70 to 80 percent of the intended profit that a farmer could have gotten if it is uh, implemented in his plan and policies. And it is when you assess loans and you have enough capital that you can branch into this level of value addition. Uh, like I said, just it's not only cocoa that we need to have value addition. There are so many other agricultural inputs that we export in their raw form that we could have added value to. But because we do not have the capital to be able to have the machinery, to be able to have the, 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 the requisite uh, uh, technology in place to be able to add the value, we allow people to add value to it and now return it back as finished products to the country and uh, come at a very high cost. So assessing capital and having enough capital for a farmer will help him to be able to navigate through the whole agricultural value chain and be able to expand to the benefit of himself, his company, and even the benefit of the country. So it is very, very important that a farmer that is forward-looking is not starved of capital. Because if he's starved of capital, he ends up being stagnant. And over time, that stagnancy will lead to, because land itself also has its uh, uh, a value, if, uh, um, how do I call it? Life it has it, its life shell. So if a farmer is not expanding and using improved implements, both fertilizer and others, it will get to a time that the life shelf of that uh, uh, particular farmland might, might be dwindling to the extent that he will not be able to get the returns he used to get before. So that is why it's very important that a, a, a farmer is able to assess loans to be able to move through the agricultural value chain and improve his production and also add value to what is being uh, uh, produced. Okay, so what are the uh, what are the problems faced in 
and the rest of you trying to get a loan? Um, the, some of the major problems faced is the high risk that is involved in uh, assessing loans. Uh, the second aspect is uh, the collateral to secure the loan. And the third aspect is the issue of uh, monitoring. Monitoring because any facility that is being given, whether by commercial banks or multilateral agencies, carry the arm of monitoring. It is the failure of monitoring that will make loans to go bad because of non-repayment. But if it is adequately monitored, uh, if uh, technical and technological uh, advice are given and uh, they have implemented, it will help the farmer to be able to do well with the loan that has been given. So the key issues that prevent a farmer from getting loan is the risk that is very uh, farming is very uh, is a high risk uh, business in Nigeria and in, even in other countries. Uh, the the time the, 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 the time frame for facilities in Nigeria is also short, and uh, farming needs long term facilities, not short term facilities. While the issue of monitoring is also very important. So these three aspects are very important, and when you look at it, the the other one, which I also want to talk about, is the experiences of uh, banks and financial institutions as regards facilities to farmers. Uh, over the years, we've discovered that uh, the experiences have not been palatable because of these things that I've laid out, the, uh, the, the risk involved, uh, the collateral uh, uh, pledged, uh, the term of the loans. We discovered that most of the time some of these uh, 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 loans given to farmers and uh, other agricultural value chain, they tend to go bad. And uh, if you look at the percentage of loans that went bad in the past five to seven years in the banking sector, agriculture took a large chunk of it. So past experience also is making banks to be careful as regards giving uh, loans to the uh, agri sector. Okay, yes, um, we've seen that um, it's usually very difficult, just as you said, that um, because of the risk involved, and um, what should farmers, where, where should they look, um, you know, you see some farmers that will tell you that they're just um, farmers and they don't do, um, you know, value addition, they don't do processing, they don't yeah. do, what's your advice, what's your, because I know that with these, the farmer earns more, Yes. And then it gives them more money for them to be able to go for the next planting season. Now, I'll give an uh, analogy uh, uh, just to corroborate what I want to say further. A farmer can try to plant uh, depending on this, the, 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 the timing of the planting, depending on the time of germination and harvest, de depending on the type of uh, crop as well. It can take six months, it can take a year, or some can take longer when it talks of those uh, cash crops like cocoa and the rest. Now, it takes the farmer an average of six months to go through the whole log of the process of producing his product. It takes a value uh, addition, probably a week, but the two of them are not operating on the same level of profitability. Mm -hmm. What that means is that the farmer will take that number of months to be able to produce his product, mm. probably have assessed the loan that is short term, and the value addition company, for example, or somebody that's taking off, that is an off taker of that farmer's product, mm. will produce a value addition within a short period. And between the two of them now, if the farmer assesses a loan for one year, and uh, at a particular interest rate, and it's expected to pay, and it takes him just one f uh, farming season to be able to repay that loan. Mm. It can take the person adding value about 12 months to continue to get uh, additional products to add values to. Mm. So what that tells us is that if the profit margin of the farmer is 20%, the profit margin of the value at the, at the, uh, the, the person having value 
will be like 70 to 80 percent so that is why why can't the farmer add that this is an advice for farmers now why can't the farmers add that aspect of his business to uh to to, to uh, not only planting and harvesting but adding value and that is why farmers should be more focused on the one that is more profitable uh, sometimes i see farmers going for a loan just to buy fertilizers uh, to prepare the ground for planting and uh, other sundry activities for planting but when farmers go beyond asking for loan to prepare the ground for planting and buying fertilizers and improve seedlings and they go to the level of having machinery and organizations in place to ensure that whatever it is that they have planted and have harvested can be uh, uh, the value addition aspect is also implemented by them that is when the level of profitability that will not hurt them comes into play i give you another example a farmer that is into uh, um, tomato planting, for example, that is situated in a Benue estate, that has gone the whole law of having a tomato paste processing plant in place. What it, what it does is that after the harvest cycle, uh, it will push a part of its product through the market in the natural raw form and take the remaining and process it into tomato paste. If you go through the, the markets in Benue, for example, that we call the food basket of Nigeria, you discover that during the season of these products like tomato, you see a whole lot of it perishing. So what happens is that, even oranges, what happens is that if the farmer has the capacity not only to plant and to harvest, but also can add value through having these plants and machinery in place, it will hate the overall profitability of that farm. <laughs> so uh, the farmers should look and go beyond the issue of just planting and harvesting. They should go beyond integrated farming and add value to their product to be able to generate more profit in their business. Yes, um, uh, for everything that's been done, yeah, there's an expected um, you know, results. The expectations from everybody doing business is that um, they are able to get profit and, of course, much, much more profit. Farmers have been advised that um, they should look inward and uh, tap into uh, the idea of um, processing these um, cool, these uh, plants that they grow so that they can have more more money in their bank accounts. Don't go nowhere. Agri economy, little shock. Discussing so much on the impact of loan acquisition in agriculture, and our guest, Mr. Gabriel Dakolo, has taken us through uh, the uh, you know what the prerequisites uh, are when we talk of getting loan for agriculture. Uh, moving forward, uh, what are the determinants of you know getting these loans? What are what what should farmers look out for? Like okay, before you go to the bank, you should be able to have A, B, C, D in place. Yes. Um Farmers should be uh, professional in requesting for loans. Uh, the first determinant of you <coughs> assessing loan in the bank uh, is uh, your feasibility studies. You must do a, a, a comprehensive report on your feasibility, uh, the capacity, and the cost analysis of the product because that will help the analyst in the bank 
to be able to uh, do a review of how profitable your plan is on the long run. Apart from the feasibility studies, you have to also be able to give the, uh, the ability of other sources of repayment if that fails. Because the truth is that for any uh, bank to give you a loan, there must be primary source of repayment and secondary source of repayment. If the first, uh, the primary source of repayment, which actually will be the sales of the proceeds, fails, then the second source of repayment could be the collateral that have been pledged or uh, insurance that has been in place to be able to recover in the case of uh, natural disasters and the rest. So this has to be in place. And the third aspect of it has to do with even the experience that you have on ground your experience in the business because uh, banks do not give facilities to startups they give facilities especially when we are talking agriculture to people that have that are that are in the business already that have done uh, that have done uh, that have at least done their business for two three four years and how do they know that it is based on your balance sheet based on your bank statement, based on what they see on ground when they come for visitation and the rest, and based on your collaborations with uh, maybe uh, the uh, research institutes and others, or now you get your seedlings and the rest. So they want to see experience. They want to be sure that you are not going to use this facility to start a probability business, that is, uh, whether it could fail or it could, it could succeed. Uh, the banks do not do trial and error. They don't play poker with their funds. So they want to see that the intending farmer that is asking for facility has a requisite experience to be able to run that business, uh, farming activity to success based on his track record. So track record in farming is a key prerequisite to, or key determinant to assessing loan facility in the bank apart from the other aspect of the type of uh, farming activities that you are into and your source of repayment as well. Okay, yes, uh, we've seen um, uh, we've seen farmers and uh, uh, small other farmers come to say that uh, we've been to the bank, we've been told to bring papers of our, of our land, you should bring this, you should bring that. In a, in a situation where this farmer is from the rural area, I know that yes, and even if you're from the rural area, you should have your R of O yes. and, and the rest of it. But then, with with the way it is in Nigeria, where it's a great grandfather that passed the land on to, yeah. and barely you see, uh, you know, family saying, ah, let's go to the area council and register this land or something. What should be done? Because most times they tell you that uh, landed or uh, properties are what banks usually ask for yes. when it comes to, uh, um, you know, um, co. Uh, when it comes to collateral yes. for, for loans? Uh, actually, um, that is where the bulk of the work of encouragement comes into place mm -hmm. and government assistance. The government from the federal level to the state level and even the local government have the responsibility to issue a certificate of occupancies as regards farm and as regards residential buildings. Just like we have in the Federal Capital Territory, for example, you discover that uh, there are some designated areas in the Federal Capital Territory, like Kujé, Buari, and Guagualada, that are designated for farming. So, and there are COFOs issued for those farmland. What that does is that it makes it easier for you to have a collateral to pledge. Because if you do not have a title to a particular land, you cannot use it as a collateral in the bank. So this appeal will go to the state government and the local government where farming activities is predominant to ensure that they package their farmers uh, adequately and also assist the farmers in ensuring that they have the requisite documents that they can use to be able to assess loans easily. Another aspect of it is that the transferability of this document is also very important to the, the, uh, the, the lenders, the banks, because we have seen in some situations that uh, some of these landed properties, uh, these farmlands, 
are not transferable based on cultural practices in some places, based on uh, uh, idol worship or, or, or worship of a particular God in those areas. And they will say, uh, if this is a family that owns this land and uh, nobody, no stranger is permitted to own it. So cultural practices can also determine. So these are some of the things that uh, the banks are always looking at. You know, it's just for example, uh, they call some land Ileusha. That is a land for the gods, so you understand. So no bank will want to accept that as a collateral because you know you cannot transfer it. It cannot, it cannot be sold. So those are part of the issue. So the government needs to create edits. The, the government needs to state clearly in their uh, ownership, the ownership structure of the land that is regarded for farming, to state clearly that is transferable. It is only when it is transferable that the banks can accept it. So that if you fail to pay, another source of repayment fails to come in. That uh, landed property that is a farm can be transferred and they can be able to recover their funds. So it's very, very important that the cooperation of the state government and the local government is needed to ensure that adequate titles are given to this farmland for the owners to be able to use it to assess facilities. Okay, yes, um, you've heard it. Um, aside, uh, it's not in the court of uh, mayor councils and that of state government to ensure that um, uh, these things have been addressed so that farmers can, uh, you know, with ease and um, have access to loans and, um, you know, repayable, of course, uh, so that um, the agricultural sector can move um, forward. On this note, to wrap it up on our economy, thank you for joining us on the show. Also. Thank you for having me. So that's it. Join us again same time, same station next week. I'm Kadija Oluwatoriyami saying bye from here.